I guess this is where things kind of go off the rails a little bit. You know, I spoke of staying in a shelter, being on the streets, the wolf helping me along the way, being alone. That's probably one of the hardest things that I've ever had to do. Age of 16, grandmother just passed away. Mom can't take care of me. She she doesn't have a clue. When you're sitting in a youth shelter, you know, you got the one thing, you got pool. At least there was a pool table that I could sit there and play with. But it wasn't, uh, it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of things that I could do otherwise. They had a computer, uh, which, you know, if I tried to do any schoolwork on, uh, I got a virus on it losing all my schoolwork. Um, I still managed to go to school and get my high school diploma. Like that's, that's an accomplishment in itself. But you know, the, the, the wolf sat there barking at me from the side and just saying, listen, I know you're alone, but don't fall into the trap. Don't fall in with the, with the crowd that's going to take you to new places and get into drugs and that was something I stayed away from that was I I saw what it did I I, I really did see what it did it, it the, the drugs were not good it, it's uh when when you sit there and you have your your family literally turning their back on you um and you don't know what to do it's uh the in essence you are alone in that sense. Alone in a life with the loyalty to those around me. I did have some friends. Um, thankfully, I was able to still do things with them, sort of stay over, play some D&D, &D, that type of thing. But literally, there was nothing I could do otherwise. You know, um, lifelong friend of my grandmother's, every once in a while, I'd stay at their place. But between that, the shelter, I stayed at a friend's place for a couple months at one point, and then that all went sideways because I wasn't doing things up to his snuff. You know, I don't talk to that friend anymore because of things that he's done. Um, not a very nice person in the long run. Uh, I, I gotta say that. So I, I'm glad that part of my life is behind me. Turn only memories of the lo loved ones lost. You see, family turned me aside when my grandmother passed in her sleep that one October. I had nowhere to turn. Mom couldn't console as uh, the rage built up inside me over this. I was the one, I, I, I sat there. I, I was the one that had to pick up the call or pick up the phone and phone the entire family and say, listen, um, my, your mom or your, your sister or my grandmother passed away. This was a heartbreaking moment in my life. And uh, I had no one to call. I actually called the one person that I cared about, the, the one that, you know, you, you, the one person that I had the high school crush on or the, the elementary crush on. That was who I called. And she, because she lived down the street, she was the girl from down the street. She came over, consoled me best she could, but that was about it. And, uh, that, that's where that left. You know, I didn't, I didn't have anyone to turn to. Um, once again, left with a $50 bill and, uh, an envelope from family just saying, Hey, Hold on to this. Maybe you need it. I don't know. They they didn't know what to do with me. Um, it's it, it's a very lonely aspect at that point. And uh, you know this is where being the loner, the the lone wolf, um, the lone kid. I didn't have friends. The, the, you know the friends I had. Um, I had one friend later on in life when we went to high school, but. Other than that, I really did not have friends to turn to. I didn't have anyone. I had my mother, which, you know, she she got high every night. It wasn't uh, it wasn't long. You know, we we went from October, November, December roll around, and uh, shortly after that, in February, that's when I was out on the streets. You know, grandmother passed away in October. I was gone in February. I mean, I went to the shelter. I ended up going back home. 
I ended up going back home for a couple weeks and ended up right back at the shelter because it wasn't a safe place to be. It, it, it was not where I could be. Going through school, you know, like they'd give me a bag lunch and this was long before I was diagnosed with my disease that um, I, I suspected I still had back at those times. Um, things, I wasn't, I, I, I was very undernourished. <laughs> I mean, when I went through high school, I, uh, I, I was 130 pounds and 5'11", and uh, I, I did not put on any weight. I couldn't put on weight, and uh, this is things. You know, you get a bag lunch from the the shelter, and he, uh, they would the the shelter would give me two because they knew I couldn't eat half of it because I just wouldn't eat half of it because I didn't like most of it. And it's not so much that I didn't like most of it. It's it, it hurt to eat at these times. So, you know, I, I did the best I could. I ate a few things. Um, luckily, some girl in the school actually took to me a little bit and uh, she started making me a lunch. She... She brought me a lunch like uh, <laughs> like training an animal at this point, which is uh, kind of funny to think about now. It really is kind of funny to think about now. You know, you, you, you go through a lot of things and uh, at least there was a couple of people that at that point had reached out and they were like, okay, we'll do this. I You know, I remember the week that my grandmother passed away. I didn't even go to school. I, I didn't know. And there was a school dance that week and I ended up going to the dance just to do something to get out of my, to get out of the house because I didn't know what to do with myself. I went to the dance and the first thing I, first thing that happened was I had a teacher hug me. And I mean, that, that was great and all that, but it didn't change anything. It didn't change the the problems that it created. It didn't do anything. It was emptiness. And I tell you, like, this story, um, until this, I haven't been able to really tell. And, uh, you know, I've, I've read a couple of the comments. I know there's not, it's not getting the huge reach out there on YouTube because YouTube doesn't care. YouTube is an algorithm, but this is where I'm now talking about it. And these are the things I need to talk about. And it's what's led me down this road. It really has. I mean... What in the world was I supposed to do at that point? I, I, I didn't have a mom that understood me. She, she wasn't there. She, she didn't care at that point. She just cared about how to get high the next day. I, I mean, I had a couple people sitting there wondering what what I would become and this is where we are now but once again I found myself alone and uh, it, it's uh, it's been a reflection of that being alone has at this point I, I gotta say when I dove into where we are now into the fandom into the furries, I, I have to say the first like couple weeks, the first month of me speaking with them, me trying to understand the communities that are out there, I had a complete sense of not belonging at all. And now we're, we're two and a half months, three months into just learning about communities and I've been showing up day after day after day to some of them and now they're 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 starting to understand that I'm not going anywhere I'm here and they're starting to learn a little bit more of who I am and you know a few of them have reached out and they've spoken and they've said you know you, you've been through some stuff and 
that's where we are now. And this is where I've had to really turn around and buckle down and be like, I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to tell the story of my life, of how we've got here. And uh, I gotta say, the, the, the turning moment of my life, 16 years old, and suddenly it's the world is on your shoulders. You don't know where to go. You don't know who to turn to. You know, I went into the system. Um, at one point, the shelter and the social services were able to put me um, in like a sort of pseudo foster home, sort of, because I'm 16, at 16, 17 at this time. It's not like you're, you're going into a home and it, you've got a father figure or a, a mother or something to take care of you. You're 16. You're pretty much an adult at this point. Um, I, I, you know, I ended up moving in with, with this Jamaican dude, um, and he ran his own business and stuff like that. And it was a very strange scenario moving into this guy's house. He, he, he opens his home I move into his health house and I gotta say it wasn't, um, it wasn't conducive to how I was it, it, it just it was so weird I never really felt like I belong there um he he would turn around you know I, I would be like he'd be like what do you want for dinner I'd be like how about some mac and cheese or something like that and instead of pulling out a box of KD and and you know giving it to the kid to to make he would sit there and you know boil up some macaroni noodles find some cheese grate it in there with a little bit of milk and then put like a crumble thing on top, throw it in the oven. You're like, dude, I, I just want mac and cheese. Like, I, it's not that it needs to be uh, this gourmet meal. Like, I'm just a kid at that point. I'm a teenager. I just, I just want to eat something. Uh, you know, it, it was very weird in that sense. And then things, we have a festival here called The Fringe. It's an artsy festival and all this other stuff. And, and he ran a booth at this. And the worst thing about this, it, it just drove me absolutely insane. The worst thing about this was, you know, he got me to tag along to this fringe, to, to this festival. And, you know, I'm sitting there like in his booth. I'm like, I have no clue what I'm doing. And then it gets to like 10 o'clock at night. And he's like, he hands me the apron and a, and a dish and towel. And be like, yeah, I brought you along so you can do the dishes. I'm like, dude, no, that's not how this is going to work. <laughs> I'm sorry. I understand that you wanted help, but you didn't even tell me that that was what, what the situation was going to be. I mean, you know, it was a month after that. I said, forget this guy. And I moved in with a friend at his mom's place. I was there for two months and right back to the shelter. It, it, you know, it, it's things like that. I was like, this isn't what I, what I signed up for. I'm already a kid on the streets and you're, you're, you're trying to, you're not even trying to give me a job at this point. You're just treating me like I'm an extra person in your home. That's going to do all the work around the home or all the work around your business. Why do I keep moving? I'm sorry. I keep moving. I'm bumping things. You know, and I just went, I, I, no, I, this is your business. I'm just a kid trying to grow up at this point. I'm trying to learn things. At, at that point, I ended up working at a, a department store for a little bit and they let me go, you know, I, it, whatever. It was a McJob at that point. It, it, it was a whatever. Anyway, you know, the, the aspect of the wolf let me thrive alone as I picked myself up off the streets at 16. Seven long months learning how to live in the dangers of life alone without anybody. Just a kid on the streets living in my own personal hell without anything. I spoke to the wolf as he kept me away from the truly harmful things. I never dove into drugs. I kept away from the addictions. I, sur I just survived as a lone wolf does, learning to fight each passing day. These darker days... The ones where all seems to be hopeless, without life, without meaning, emptiness inside. A broken boy with the, the world gone and desperate for life beyond the lack of control. 
Remembering loved ones that once were and trying to honor those of the past. Moving forward to something greater. An awakening of sorts to something better. Now, when it came down to it, you know, the, the raccoon sitting there teaching me a couple tricks, the payphone trick, the payphone glitch. If you didn't see the previous video with the journey, that, those were things that helped me along. They, they, they helped me get a little bit of money, a little bit of pocket money so I can actually buy some other food that would settle well, or at least Slurpee once a day. You know, I, Slurpees were my go-to thing, it, you know, especially when they were like, 50 to a dollar 50 cents to a dollar at the time now you buy a slurpee they're like five dollars so it's not not worth it at all it's not worth the sugar it's not worth the 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 ridiculousness that comes with the slurpee now you may call this in, in in like the native canadian or native american tongue people call this like a spirit quest at this point and that's kind of what it felt like overall um, of course, those that dive into the fandom, I've seen many comments saying you need to find help. You need to, you need to go and talk to a doctor. And honestly, this is more of a hobby than it is living the life of a bird. I don't, I'm not a bird. I, I just use this as a, what's called a persona or use this as a means to an end, a medium at this point. That medium means and like it means i can do things it means i can just let go and show some more expressive natures behind this honestly a lot of people just don't understand they don't understand what it means to to dive into your own psyche to dive into your own spirituality and and come back and say hey this is healthy this is a good thing for you Listening to one's inner self leads to an intuition that is unmatched in the world today. And that's a lot of what's going on here. I, I've always had a keen sense, a keen intuition when it comes to certain things that are going on in my life. When it comes to work, when it comes to friends, when it comes to people that I work with. I, I can usually be a good judge right off the bat because I've been at the bottom. I've been where it doesn't matter anymore we get into a sense here where i get through high school everything just kind of becomes a blur um i move in with my with a couple of my friends couple room roommates at the time and you know <laughs> the, these were the times where i'd go to work i'd come home we play dungeons and dragons i'd go to work we'd come home We'd play Dungeons and Dragons. We would play. We played Dungeons and Dragons for about a year straight, in a sense. And I gotta say, a lot of those were just absolute crazy adventures. It, 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 you know, when when you go through an adventure and it just becomes this this nuance, and you live your life on the fantasy life and. You wake up each day and that's all you did. It, it, it became more of an obsession at that point. And it, uh, that part probably wasn't as healthy, but we did get out of that. We did start moving out of that sort of scenario because we started joining LARP, LARP groups. We started joining what's called live action role playing, which actually got us out of the house. We went to, and we met at a bar um, at this point. And we could have a couple of drinks, have a, a, a nice, healthy sized poutine. And, uh, and then we would play Vampire the Masquerade or Mage the Ascent or Werewolf the Apocalypse. Those were games that we had joined. It's all White Wolf at that point. I gotta say, at the time, there was a few of those. They would sit there, uh, you know, the storytellers in this sense, the ones that ran these games. They would turn around to my character or turn around to me personally. I don't know why they would half the time they would pick me just because I'm in the room and they would have something completely negative that would happen to my character or they'd kill him off. And I'm like, thanks. You know, I just, I just spent a month making this character, uh, you know, and when, when it got to about the fifth time of that happening, that's about the time that I stopped playing these games and I went, you know what, I'm not here for your own entertainment. I'm here to, to try and do something better. 
Um, and that's when I said, no, no more, no more. It, 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 it was fun to do a lot of LARPing, especially when you could do it in the middle of City Hall and you, you create a gang role that actually turns around and it's a type of vampire and ma vampire the masquerade, but a, a type of gang role that, uh, instead of morphing into a wolf, morphed into a raccoon that 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 was a very interesting thing to do um anyway move on from all of that and i gotta say one of the things with dungeons and dragons was that i had created a a character and what we didn't know was the dm had made our characters a little bit more powerful so we could do a much higher level campaign and the characters we were playing were half bloods half bloods of the gods and 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 it they gave me pretty much artemis uh like the half son half blood son of artemis at that point but it wasn't in that sense like the, it was his own pantheon and it became more of he became a phoenix when he uh ended up sacrificing himself and in that essence was reborn as his own deity and that's where that moved on from that a lot of the dungeons and dragons stuff that happened really moved forward without it it, it moved forward and yeah it just you know you, you have a character that becomes the soul of a phoenix and now that's where we are today kind of still reminiscing that now i gotta step back a little bit more the phoenix meant a lot more than just what you see here with me as this avatar right now, the Phoenix meant even more. I, I, I did a previous video on my elementary school. Um, my elementary school, their, their mascot was the Phoenix. It was the Phoenix. And that was something that resonated with me back then and resonates with me now. And was that something that set up to where I am today? I was a very different kid. I won awards, like, there was one award that I was given, it was called the Rule of 72, and it was an award given to the kid that they thought in the school, this was back in like grade nine, that it was given to the kid that they thought would actually succeed in life, that they, they would make wise business decisions, they would move forward and actually do something and absolutely, absolutely accomplish something more with their life and would be the one person that stands at the top there and be be that person and you know great as it was it came with like a 50 dollars check at the time that went to clothing uh for my summer but where now i'm just i'm here in front of the in front of a camera talking to all of you and just saying hey listen did i succeed was I successful in life? Well, that's yet to be seen. I'm an electrician today. I'm married. I have a kid. We, we, we have a house. We have things around us, but we've gone through hell and back for this. Having to make extreme sacrifices in the long run. And I gotta say, um, those sacrifices were not easy. They, they were, one of the one of the hardest things that i've ever had to sacrifice and uh it, it, it's not easy in that sense now when it when it comes down to this remembering life of the school once more the phoenix speaks a renewal a rebirth is born a strong tide of the sun and a drawing emotion of yesterday a kid no more and left in the wake of the ashes before the fire and the flame ignited something more and that that's kind of where the Dungeons and Dragons character, where where I learn honestly playing Dungeons and Dragons, you learn extreme leadership skills. That's that's something that is not transferred in in a lot of other cases. I had to make that sacrifice as that character for for the greater good at this point, for to save everyone else. And it was, okay, now you burn it all down. You burn it to the ground and you're reborn as a, a, a deity, uh, as something with the soul of a phoenix. And that's what really moved forward in that sense. But honestly, it, it comes down to, at that point in my life, you, you learn the learning the ropes to live again. Diving deep, we in into the obsession 
out of control, never forgotten is the soul. But the demons tug even more. That, that was probably part of it. You know, I'm down and out. We, yeah, we, we played a lot of Dungeons and Dragons, but that, that didn't become as healthy as it, it should have. Demons thoughts were still quite heavily there. Um, you know, and remembering once came from the knowing that the sun was always brighter the next day when the phoenix rises with it. And that was, I gotta say, without the phoenix idea, the, the motif of it, learning at that point to listen to my inner self, to listen to things. And that's where we are today, right? Really listening to where I am. And that's where, once again... You know, everything in the fandom right now, I truly felt alone. I truly did feel alone when, I, when making those first steps through the door. I I just don't, I, I, I feel alone in that sense, but I know I'm not because I actually have people picking me up right now. And uh, that's what matters the most is that I actually have found a community of people, a, a massive community of people that are sitting there saying, listen, what you're doing is worth it. And I'm just glad to be in front of a camera and say, I'm just telling my story. So I'm going to leave it here. I have more to tell, much more of the story to tell. So please do me a favor, hit the notification bell, hit the subscribe button, come back again i'm putting this in a playlist so everyone can if you want to sit there and listen to the whole story at once it'll be there for you when you do find this channel until next time i'm your proud canadian phoenix cinder shadow signing off here have yourselves a great day don't forget to like and subscribe